Okay, welcome everyone. I'll uh, put my mug up here for a second as well. Um, even though I'm in like a dungeon, it looks like. <clears throat> welcome to this week's webinar. Uh, again, I'd like to everyone to participate as much as possible. We are, d are doing it on, on finding and hiring employees this week. And and would also, anything that you guys would like to speak about, we've always thought it, it'd be great to do stuff geared on what you guys are looking for, what you want. So at the end, we'll ask that question. Um, we have a couple directions we would like to go. Um, but if everybody wants to go in a different direction and talk about something else, we could do that as well. Um, Anyway, so we're going to turn the time over to Lyle. He's, he's presenting this time. Uh, Lyle does a lot with managing employees, um, has great tactics for finding them and, and, and maintaining them. Uh, I even, I don't know if you saw that Lyle on Snowy's Facebook, but even one of your employees <laughs> did a post on Snowy's, on, on corporate Snowy's Facebook and just said how what an, what an awesome employer you were. Anyway, it's pretty cool. I'll have to show you that if you didn't see it. i, I got to remember to pay them. Yeah, that was some bribery. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I didn't know that. You'll have to send me the link. I'll shoot it to you. Anyway, so I'll turn the time over to you now, Lyle, and uh, we'll get okay. started. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Now, I'm gonna, Aaron, I'm going to ask you to watch the questions as I get talking on this. I'll forget to look at that because um, I want to have a whole screen. So if we need to stop or answer something, grab me along the way. And again, with that, everybody, on the screen is the, the chat section there. Feel free to um, put a question in as we go along, and we'll answer those and, and stop what we're doing. What I wanted to do here was really do a, a simple overview of how we go through the interview process, what we look for for an employee, how do we interview them, how do we train them, and how do we manage them on a day-to-day -day basis. So we've got an awful lot of material that we're going to be covering in the next 30 minutes. So as I move quickly, that's why if you have questions, don't be afraid to say, hey, wait a minute, and type a, a note in to let them know that. Um, really, to start with, kind of the, the profile of, of my employees, and this happened solely by accident that I discovered this. Um, my oldest son, when I actually 10 years ago got back into Snowy because he couldn't find a job. He was... Um, went to, I think it was 18 job interviews and couldn't get a job. And I was giving him our time about, what are you saying to these people? And the, the, as soon as they'd say, tell me a little about yourself, and he'd say, I'm on the football team, I'm on the wrestling team, I'm involved in Boy Scouts. And they said, sorry, kid, you're too busy, go away, we're not interested. And couldn't find a job. Well, all of a sudden, and I announced sports at the local high school, so I know a lot of the athletes in all the different sports. And I'm talking to them, and none of them have jobs. And I'm asking, you know, why? what's going on, guys? You can't get jobs. And they're like, nobody wants to hire us. We're too busy. They don't want to work around the schedule of a busy kid. Well, first summer, I hired a bunch of kids, and they were all busy kids, and I worked around their schedule. They loved it. What I found was a group of kids that, that met a simple profile that was the honor roll student athlete. Now, I'm not looking for the, and I've got it pulled up on the screen here. I'm assuming you can see this. Um, has the honor roll student athlete, this is somebody, this JV or varsity team. I'm not looking for the recreational soccer. I'm looking for the kid that's on the soccer team and participates in the off-season soccer programs and that kind of stuff. If I have found a kid that can figure out how to be successful in a sport and be successful in school, I've been a kid that's learned a little bit about discipline and commitment and time management. Aaron? Yeah, hang tight. The, the idea there... Okay, am I back on? You're back on now. Okay. So as I, I did this, the, the kids, the, the discipline that it takes to figure out how to do well in school and do well in a sport because, like I said, they're learning the time management, they're learning the, the personal commitment to it, those kind of things. Now, do I make exceptions? Absolutely. This is not a hard and fast rule, but it is a great overview of what I have, have just proven to be successful, you know? Yeah, and it's one component of it. I'm going to go through some other ones as we go through this. 
but it was my good basis. And I honestly, it didn't have to be a student athlete. It could be involved in extracurricular activities. I've got kids from drama, kids from band and orchestra, but they're heavily involved in extracurricular activities. Um, I have a gal I hired last year that is a phenomenal worker, and she's not involved in anything sports-wise. She, she actually said to me, she said, I'd love to be an athlete, but I am the most uncoordinated person on God's green earth. And she tried every sport imaginable and couldn't do any of them. So that's kind of the profile of the, the kid that I'm looking for. Um, how do I find them? Well, again, why do I like the sports? Because it's through sports I find out who are the team players. Can they take and follow instruction? Do they have a, hard, a positive attitude? Are they a hard worker? Well, who's the person that's going to know that? So I go into the local high school. I don't approach counselors. I don't approach an athletic director. The counselors talk to them for two minutes sitting in an office. They don't know anything about it. The athletic director doesn't have interaction. It's the coaches that are the ones that I'm going to approach. And it, it's interesting because you go into a coach and say, I'm looking for a kid that is a team player, knows how to take instruction, is a hard worker, and committed to what they're doing. And they're like, oh, man, I've got the perfect, and they'll give you three or four kids. Um, one of the things, and I don't have it on this list, I need to update it, is when I approach coaches, there are two different things you're looking at. One is coaches of different sports. Is one. The second one is I'm looking for coaches of sports of different seasons. When I talk about seasons, like I'm looking football, soccer, volleyball. Those are all fall sports. In the winter, I've got basketball and swimming are typically your, your winter sports. In the spring, I've got track and tennis. Um, I think, actually, I can't remember what tennis is. But, I, oh, baseball and softball are my other spring sports. So I'm looking for that combination. And the reason why I like to mix up the sports and the seasons is if I get too many in the same sport and the team goes on, gets caught up in a championship tournament, I'm losing all the kids from that sport. Or maybe I've got too many kids in the fall, and when I hit fall time, they're all gone to their sports. I have nobody available to work. So it's finding that balance in there of, of different seasons as well as different sports that so can overload. The other thing I look for is different schools. Don't get too many kids from the same school if you can prevent it. Um, some of that helps when you get into college kids and those kind of things, but that's just kind of an overall. Now, the actual recruiting process. So that's just how do I find these kids and who I go through when I'm, I'm going into an area cold turkey and I need to find a few kids. I'm honestly at the point now, just to give you a little bit of an overview of where we are, uh, we have four stationary locations and eight mobile units, so a total of 12 units. I have 52 teenagers and college-age kids on my payroll, and we manage roughly, in any given week, is 105 to 115 shifts every week. And we're going to walk through how do we manage that and do that. So I, I probably average every year, I, I lose about six to eight kids a year. Uh, like this last year, I lost eight. The loss of those employees was due to um, three head internships, two graduated from college, one moved out of the country on a, a study abroad, and the other two oh, had to stay at college. We're working during the summer, and we're not able to come back. So the... The idea is I don't lose a lot of kids, but I get about 60 applications a year for people wanting jobs. And it makes it real easy for me to interview 60 and narrow it down to the ones that I like. Yeah. I don't have to go hunting the way I used to, but when I go open a new area, I'm still approaching the same thing. I'll go into an area, I need to go find new kids. This is how I go about it. But in the recruiting, first thing I do, have a card with your email address. Hand it to them and say, you're interested in job, great. Email me. Here's the app. Here's my uh, card. Surprisingly, 50% of the cards I hand out will never send me an application or never send me an email. It's wonderful. I just eliminated 50 interviews that are kids that I don't want. They're, if they can't discipline themselves enough to send me an email, I'm not going to want them working for me because I'm relying on them to be very independent and, and self-motivated. Then I take of the emails I get, I send an application back from that that says, here's the application. Thanks for applying with us. If we can do anything. If you have any questions, complete it, send it back to us. 
50% of the ones I send applications to never respond. So immediately I've wiped out 75% of the people that I that have either initially approached me or that I have approached, and I've narrowed down to a core group that are interested enough to, to send me an email and complete the application and either scan it, send it back to me, email it, or put it in uh, the postal service to get it back to me. At that point, now they've earned the right to an interview, and I bring every one of them in for an interview. We go through a two-interview process. Oh, I want to jump in a couple of things. This is the application, and we can. this is something you can go in and change. Obviously, I've tweaked it to my own needs, so it's got my company name on here, Snowy Marketing. Um, where are you interested in working? You'll see our locations listed here, Cherry Grove, Eastgate, Hyde Park, Newport. You know, how did you find out about us? And then we ask for their information. And this gets into things you can see here on the scheduling. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. On the scheduling component of this, that we're looking at, you know, are you available to work during the months that we're open? And you can, again, adapt to where you are. Can you work later in the evening? Yeah. Some kids can't work at night. I'm just trying to do that. Is there a particular day of the week? I have some kids that have certain days that are family issues or they might have Sunday because of religious reasons don't work. Are you able to close a building by yourself? Some people are not comfortable with you know, being at a building and, and locking it up at night and counting the money and those kind of things, and that's what I need to know. Can they travel? So I'm looking at traveling to events and those kind of things, and what other things are you involved in? Just gives me an idea of what I'm going to be dealing with. Scheduling issues, you know, can you show up? This is a, basically a little mini commitment that says, I'm expecting you to show up. If you don't, you're scheduled and you can't find it. It's your job to find a replacement if you can't work. So it puts a little thought ahead of time of doing it, and I don't want your friends hanging out of my buildings. Can you tell your friends, hey, guys, you got a snow cone, that's fine, but it's, you're not going to hang here. You want to go sit at the table and talk, but this is to entice families. I find if I have teenagers hanging there, families tend not to show up as much. Work experience, 99% of the time this is blank. Fill it out, and then I do a little math thing to just see if they can, can do basic math skills as we go through that. So that's the application. Now we bring them in for the interview. What we do in the interview is just a basic set of questions. Again, I'm not going to go through the, every question on here, but it's just give me your experience. A few kind of key questions that I'll hit. Um, I like to know how their friends rank them. Are they an introvert and an extrovert? I never ask them how they rank themselves. I ask how their friends would do it. I even have one in here where we're talking about cleanliness. And oh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how clean is your bedroom? That's this uh, uh, I get my holler here. This question right here. How clean is your bedroom? And they'll always give it about a 6 or a 7. And then I ask how their mom ranks it. And it drops two points almost immediately. which you know, what I'm looking for is just sit, can these kids keep the place clean? And these are four key issues I talk about with every employee. Where our emphasis is great service, the quality of the snow cone. I'm in that endless pursuit of the perfect snow cone. Can we're always on time? We say we're going to be there. We're there. And can you keep the place clean? And there are expectations. We communicate by email. I don't want to be making 50 phone calls. And then scheduling. Can you be disciplined to put your schedule in, that kind of stuff. And we have, you know, what are the hours we work and seniority. Um, the kids that have been here the longest get the, their choice of how many shifts they want to work. So it gives them a, a little more flexibility when they've been around for a while. So these questions are all available. Again, I'm, I don't want to spend a ton of time going through, but the whole idea is simply to... Um, go down and, and get them talking about themselves in a variety of ways. Um, the first section of questions are, why do you want to work here? You know, What do you know about the job? Why should I hire you? How does your personality fit with us? And the last is getting into how are you going to deal with situations like a customer says, I want my money back. How would you respond to that? And we have ways we do that. We'll get into that in managing a building at another time. But it's a, a good approach to it. So, just a great way to questionnaire to, to bring them in. The second interview, if, if you're doing a lot of kids, this is helpful. Sometimes you don't need it, or if you're only hiring two or three, it doesn't make much sense. But in a group interview, we bring in about probably 10 kids, 
and we have them, we teach one of them how to make a snow cone, and then they have to teach the person behind them who has to teach the person behind them. Kind of fun, and we'll step in and correct if they've gotten misinformation. But we're looking at their ability to listen, learn, and use that information by showing it to somebody else, see if they were paying attention. Then we bring them in, sit them down, and we have pair them up with people they don't know, and they have five minutes to talk to each other, and then they get to spend a three-minute introduction of the other person. So it'd be like if Aaron and I didn't know each other, we'd talk for five minutes, then I have a three-minute introduction of Aaron. This tells me how do they deal with pressure because they're panicking a little bit. You're sitting in one of my buildings and there's 20 customers out front and three cars at the drive up. I want to know if this person's going to buckle under pressure. I've actually had, in an interview, I've had kids break down in tears. And all, I, I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown with one kid. And it's like, okay, you know, we'll finish the interview, but not the, the right candidate, if you will, for the snowy situation. Um, the next is the interview question we did training. Once I hire the kids, we have a checklist here, and this one's a critical one to us, that we go through with every employee, and they're all trained the same way on what we go through. So they explain, you know, this is for our buildings that I'm using on this one. Um, explain the location and contents of the binder and clipboard. We have in every building is a clipboard that has all the content information, our cup count sheets, our to-do lists, open and close lists, all that kind of stuff. So we have lists here that we are encouraging that the employees, and when we get into managing buildings, we'll provide this list. But this list goes through every step. Turn on the windsock, make the sanitized water, da 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 And it's one thing to have a list. The other is how do you do that? And that's what this list goes through. How do you count the money to open and close and do the cup count sheet? Um, cash boxes, and we have these refund cards and business cards and gift cards. What do all those mean? Where do I put $50 bills, $100 bills? How do I check those to make sure they're not bogus money? We walk through the, the cup count. I, I had somebody actually was shocked at this, the making of a snow cone. Uh, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There are 13, 14, 15, 16 things you need to know about making a snow cone. Everything is to shoot ice in for the flavor on, too. That's all you need. Now, we we are pretty extensive in that endless pursuit of the perfect snow cone. And this could be a more in-depth, again, for another time. But I wanted to just expose you to the things we look at. Uh, a couple of them. You leave a machine sitting there, and, and the ice has started to melt because it's been shaved, and you're 10 minutes before your next customer. Well, as soon as you step on that, it shoots all that slush into the bottom of the cup. That makes a terrible snow cone because it will turn to a solid chunk by the time the customer gets there. So we blow that first bit of ice out, and then you're getting fresh shaved ice when you're doing it. Um, never use the ice that's dropped below. You know, when you, if you've made any snow cone with a snowy machine, if you don't have that cup perfectly straight up and down, you get a lopsided top. And so we teach them how to do that correctly. How to make a big top, how to not pack it, how much flavor do you put on. This is a, there's a science to this, and that's what we've tried to do. Our flavoring process, refilling the bottles, and you know when do we refill them? How do you refill them? How much concentrate do I put in? How do I do the sugar water? Again, this is a lot of information. Uh, I had one guy tell me he said I, I answered questions he didn't even know he had as he looked through this. So this goes through all the opening process, what to do during the shift, and then the bottom part is how do I close a shift and the duties and things you should be doing routinely throughout. The, uh, the event as we go through that. So it's, a, it's two very full pages and a training takes, uh, we bring them in for training in the office here where our, our snow cone stuff is, our warehouse, then we train them in the building, they're trained on how to open and the, somebody is with them the entire time to make sure they're doing it all right. The next time somebody comes in to, they're taught on how to close, we come in, open with them, the manager, the trainer leaves, comes back, and picks up. Uh, just comes back an hour before, answers any questions, is available if they have problems in between, but answers those questions immediately, and then goes through the closing process with them. And then they're on their own the next time, and a phone call away with their trainer. 
and we have three trainers, so we rotate them so they get somebody different each time as they're going through it. So again, these forms are available, easy to mail, and you can or email to you and tweak them. But it's just a boatload of little things that we watched uh, that have been helpful. And the idea is, if they don't know, why do we do it multiple times? Because they're never going to. This is think about how much information is here. If I threw this all at you in one time, you'd be overwhelmed. And that's what we find is that overwhelming. And so they go through three trainings. By the time they get to a third training session, they've got a pretty good feel for what we're doing there. Hey, Lyle. Uh, yeah. Let me interrupt real quick. Uh, so we have Stephen asking, uh, what? how do you normally hire your employees, W4, 1099? I'm sorry, ask, ask that again. Uh, how do you, when you hire your employees, what do you hire them as, W4, 1099? No, I, our W-2 is actually the right term. Um, I hire them as W-2 employees. Well, they, well, they, so we fill have the, they have to fill out a W-4, but the Correct. W-2 is what they end up with. So okay. they are, yeah, I do the, the W-4, which is your federal, uh, the I-9, and then I do a state permit. And then I also have, in the state of Ohio, as an example, we have to have what is called a, a work permit if they're still in high school. So we have four forms they have to complete. We use ADP to do our payroll. Um, I've, of all the things in business I hate, payroll is the most cumbersome. I'd rather pay somebody than never have to deal with that. It's that one's like, eh. yeah. If you like doing payroll, I just feel sorry for you. <laughs> and and Jay asked. If, um, Jay, Jay also. Oh, about the mom come into the interview. Only time I have. A parent, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't. I will have a parent can, can be in the area, but I don't want them sitting there for the interview. I will not let a parent in. Um, I've actually had parents email me and say, I need an application for my kid. I email them back and say, thank you for your interest for your child. However, I am interest interviewing or hiring your child, not you. If your child is interested, they need to email me themselves. And I've had one parent get upset at that. The rest of them were like, wow, I like that. Good. I'll have them email. Um, and I tell on the interview, I tell the parents, I'm sorry, I'm interviewing your child. I don't want your influence. I don't I need to be able to have a conversation with them. If they're that if they're nervous about that I'm on a one on one interview, I'll put in an open area, but I'm gonna have them sit where they can see me, but they're not gonna listen in on the conversation. They influence the kid too much and that the child won't open up and talk to me when the parents are there. So I, I don't. I'm I invite them to come in. I bring the parents in and walk them through who Snowy is. I always do that. It makes them feel a little more comfortable. We're not some fly-by-night. You know, I'm interviewing their 16-year-old daughter. Here I am, a 53-year-old guy. They want to make sure I'm not some pervert. They want somebody that, you know, it's a legitimate business. And and that, so we can pass that. You know, like I said, I bring them in, go through the, I let the parents come in, have the tour, talk with them before I ever bring the, their uh, son or daughter in for an interview. No. Um, pain under the table. <laughs> uh, that's a, a conversation that you're going to have to decide for yourself what you do there. Obviously, this is a recorded conversation, and I'm not going to give anybody specific advice on what to do there. But I pay mine above board. What you choose to do is entirely up to you. Um, can we get the train if you're picking up the bus? Jay, you'd have to pick it up from me. So I don't I don't know where you were picking up from me or picking it up from Salt Lake, but I do invite anybody if you want to fly in, we always offer if you want to come shadow me for a day and I can put you in a building with one of my employees for an hour. Any of that is is always available. Did I get all the questions answered before I jump to the next? How do I get a copy of the training list? Uh, Aaron, would you post email addresses for us? It, yeah, I've done it already. I've okay. Put it out. We'll, we'll well, payroll it. system. I hit that. I use I use um, ADP. Way of doing it. Yeah, and I payroll timekeeping. That gets into the managed thing. That's going to be a topic we're we and we'll get into that in some more detail. Okay. Um, 
jump to, I don't have a lot of time left, but I really want to get to this section. This is how I'm these. This is an online program called When to Work. So if you look in the upper left corner, you're going to see there, When to Work. And they are the company that built this program right up there. And they allow me to put my logo on and all that fun kind of stuff. I look at a variety of different programs. I actually was going to put in my or create my own program. That was going to cost me about $10,000. This that you're going to look at here as I go through this, understand this is this cost me a whopping three hundred dollars a year. And that's with up to sixty employees. If you have less than thirty, the cost goes down, and then I think it's under ten the cost goes down even more. So this is just to give you a little overview. Um, it I put all my employees in, so I have a complete list of all the employees and all their personal information, and then off those employees, I can come in here and add positions. You see here current positions, and it has bus driver, bus worker, Eastgate, Cherry Grove. Those are my locations, the events. So this is the position, and a position is what I would call a location or the event. Position is the term. This was actually built for restaurants. So it just gives you an idea there of how we have built that, but I can go in and add to this and create any new position. So if I open a new location, I come in here and type in, you know, we're looking at a location in Marymont. So I would type in Marymont, and now all of a sudden I've got a new position. You'll see where that applies in just a minute. So I can go into that, the employees, now I can select who is available to work at which location. Somebody might say, like this first one, this first gal works at every location. Uh, a couple of them later might say, I'll work some locations, I don't want to work others. They they don't like driving. I got a gal here, like this first kid, he's too young to drive the bus. He's only 15. That'd be a little problem if you wrecked my bus. Uh, they also go in here and how I contact them for information as when the schedule is published. And again, I'm, I'm going to blow through this pretty quick, but just give you an overview of what it's capable of. So I have all the employees, where they can work and how I'm going to communicate with them. I can send urgent text messages so everybody gets a notice immediately. I can send emails through this. Uh, whenever I post their schedule, they'll get it. And so what happens is now I can go in here and I can take each of those positions that they call it, or we call it a, uh, again, a, a location. So I'll have like, sorry, I need to fast forward to a week here. Okay, so I just put a location in here, like for the bus. Um, I just was putting some stuff in preliminary. I haven't really done this week yet. But I have this, I have unassigned. I pull this up, and I've got in here, these are the employees that are available to work. You'll see it where it says prefers this time. So I have an event that's from 6 to 8.30 at night. It's a baseball team doing an award ceremony. They've got about, or it's actually a baseball um, club. They'll have about 300 kids there. And I can go in and select any one of these kids. So I just select one on there, put it in. That employee is now assigned that shift. And I can just randomly go through and, and grab kids in here to assign them whatever location. But it only pulls up when I pull up that particular location or event. It only brings up the kids that are, that are able to work at that location and that have said on their schedule they're available. Now, how do they do that? They log in under their own work name, and they can put in. The green tells me they're available. The red tells me they're not. And so, like, okay, I've got an employee here that's pretty available. Um, I'm going to pick one that's always a little more challenging for me on schedules to work around. <laughs> First week she's ever been completely available. Now, this is not unusual. I'll see this a lot. You'll see some shifts available. The pink means she can work, but she really doesn't want to. Now, if I see that repeatedly, she always wants Friday and Saturday nights off. I, I schedule her to work just for fun sometimes. You know, some kids only available, not available to do morning shifts and, and that kind of stuff. This just gives you an idea of what will go on. You'll get some really goofy schedules in here as we do it. So I'll go through. I put all, assign all the shifts for the different events. We have an on-call manager. That's one of the people that if they're running out of cash or a problem, they can run and do it. And then I come up and hit this button that says publish, 
and it sends a text message and an email to every employee letting them know the schedule has been published. And what they're going to get is it'll look like this. It'll say, the snowy marketing schedule for the week of June 17th has been published, in this case, by me. Then they'll get another email that gives them their individual shifts. So, like, here's an event. Um, Saturday, June 22nd, from 6 to 11 p.m., event number two, the St. Columban Festival, you're the manager. This happens to be, because I manage some of the events, I get notified, and I'm an on-call manager for different things. So this employee can literally print this out. They don't have to go hunt and search. They don't have to do anything. They literally just print this out, stick it on the refrigerator, and they're done. They can download this into Google Maps if they want, or I'm sorry, Google Calendar, and it'll, and they can synchronize that with their phones. I mean, there's, it's really a phenomenal program for what happens. And then you have, as soon as, yeah, go ahead. I just had a question. Is there a mobile interface to this program at all? Yes, I can do it all from my phone. I, I don't even have to put passwords in. I can, from my phone, access it immediately. So what happens is, the when the employees post it out there, one of the things it has is a trade board. And I'm going to see if I have any trades up. Okay, I happen to have a couple up for next week that just popped up. So this is the employees, all of a sudden their schedule changed, and they're like, oh, I can't work this. So they post it out on the trade board. And this can now be, I'm actually surprised to see these two. Uh, both of them went up today. Usually from the time one gets posted to being picked up is about 20 minutes. I've got employees that, that are just great at grabbing shifts. So they do all the interaction between them when another employee wants it. What I get as the manager is I get this notice. Like that one I just mentioned went up today. Let's go pull that exact one up. Um, Okay, this is one of those two shifts. Just got posted here um, about 30 minutes ago. Megan Swearingen posted this shift at Eastgate. She either wants to trade it with somebody or is willing to drop it so somebody can pick it up. So they can choose whether they want to drop it. It means just somebody take it, please. They can trade it. It says, I won't give up my shift, but I'll trade it for another one, or I'll be willing to trade or drop. I'd like a shift, but if I can't, that's fine. And so it notifies me that they're doing it. And then, in this case, I have this girl happened to pick up another shift that was out there. And so I'm notified that that shift had been picked up. I haven't had to do anything. All of these shifts are being traded between themselves through this program. And so when they post a shift, an email and a text goes to every kid, and then whoever grabs it, I get confirmation who picked the shift up. This has... I've gone from what used to take me probably with 30 employees, I was probably spending 8 to 12 hours a week uh, getting the schedule together and trying to do it to I spend maybe two hours in the scheduling and maybe three hours tops, and then the employees do all the trading between them. I don't have to do anything. It is, it is hands down the best management tool I have for working with employees because it, it gives all that information to them right there up front. So they can go in, like I say, and trade the shifts between them at any given time. Um, they don't have to schedule time off because, like I said, you know, they, they go in. I can go in and look by employee how many shifts do they have. I can see here if they've gotten the email, opened the email to look at it so they know their shifts. I can tell if they've gone out and looked at the website and looked at different things on them. Again, I can look at schedules. There's a gal that's got limited availability. I can see what days she was scheduled for. So as I'm doing all this, there's multiple ways to look at it. It'll tell me if there's conflicts. If I try to put somebody on a shift with them or not there, it'll send up a flag saying this person cannot work or you know, you're overlapping or you're giving them too many shifts. I can go in by employee and literally control Here, where they work, how many hours a week, how many days a week, how many hours a day, how many shifts, and I can put them in a priority first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So if I've got an employee that I don't want to work a lot, I put them down on the totem pole. Uh, if you've got another job, you're a four on the priority list. A one is somebody that's got seniority and has been with me for at least two years. A two is you're in your second year with me. A three is you're new. A four is you've got another job. Basically, your pickup shifts only or if we're desperate. 
So, and I can, you know, right now, if I had something come up and I needed to send a message, I can click on this um, urgent text message. I can type in something, hit a button, and a text message is gone to every employee immediately. So, real hard for them to tell me that they didn't know about it because I have so many ways of communicating and I'm doing it all right here sitting at my computer. Hey, Lyle. Uh, do, you, do you ever have an issue with kids not getting those texts that this software wasn't able to communicate with their carrier? No, because the program, when you go in and put somebody in, it, it actually has you, when you put your name in, if I put a new employee, let's see if I can do this. Um, I'll put a, I got a generic one that I do here. I can come in here and edit, so I can go in and put this text message, and I, you put in their phone number, and then it actually uses, here's all the different cellular companies and the way you can do text messages through their system. Yeah. After you put it in, then when you click on it, it's actually going to say, it's going to send you a text with a four-digit code that you have to confirm that you received it. And that way they don't send text messages to the wrong person by accident. Cool. So it won't send text messages out till you confirm that it's working. And if there's a problem and it doesn't work, I get notified that the email or the text messaging is not working. In fact, I might have one in here. I just, like right here, this gal just got put in. She has had, didn't work for him. It wasn't coming back and her internship fell through. So hers is, has this notice that there's a problem, and, and it's sending a flag up that I need to, to look at it. So I'll contact her, and we'll get that taken care of. And, and her and I have already talked, so I knew that was in there. So it's, it, it's hard for them to say it doesn't when the whole system is verification proof, that it, you can't even get into the system without verifying it. And it's real hard for them to say, I didn't get it, when we know they do. So it's... It, it's a it's pretty slick. They've done a phenomenal job with this. I, there's only one thing this doesn't do that I would like, and that is at the end of a um, or, uh, when a shift is coming up, I would love when a shift when they're opening a shift, uh, I would love a text to go out two hours before the shift saying, "Remember, you have a shift in two hours." Even with as phenomenal as this is, they forget. It's still human error. They still got to remember to show up. And so I would love a text that just says, remember your shift in two hours at Cherry Grove from noon to 5 o'clock on Tuesday, or what's today, Thursday, the, the 13th. And they, I've given it to them a couple of different times, and they're putting it on the, the wish list, which means it may happen. It may not. I don't know. But it's a, uh, it's a good thing to, to go with it. And that's a, a pretty fast overview, but I hope you get a, a good feel for what it's capable of doing. That it's it's just I love this program. My employees, when we first went in and did it, and we put in the positions, and it took me a little bit to build it, but once it was built, uh, they used it for two weeks and told me if I went back to the old way of doing it, they were all quitting. They just said, "No way will we follow that again." Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. And it, it's, it has saved me hundreds of hours over the, you know, I've been using this for four years now, and, and I wouldn't do any, it's the, it's the best spent $300 of anything I do. I would not, not, not hesitate for a moment to do it. Um, why don't we open it up to any questions? I threw a lot of stuff at today was just a, a brain dump, if you will, of, of information that just, are the resources out there for managing employees, what we look for. Everything I've shown you today, I'll do a quick recap. We have a summary of the interviewing process and how to find kids. I'm going to tweak that a little bit. That's available. The next form was the application. Again, it's in a Word document. We can send it. You can personalize it to yourself, but you got a good chassis that's built to work off of. The interview questions, again, tweak it. It's a good starting point. Um, I did get one question about what is all this on the side over here. This is, do I bring them in for the second interview, yes or no? On a scale of 1 to 10, where would I put them? Uh, you know, when I'm going to bring them in for a second interview, if they're a 5, I'm not interested. 
how what's their energy level, what's their GPA in school. You know, one of the questions I ask, how well are you doing in school? Are you involved in extracurricular? So I want to know about that. Can they work? Which locations can they work? This is my Cherry Grove, Eastgate, Hyde Park, Newport. Can they work events? Do they have another job? And then these are things I want to talk about. The, the great service, my expectations, we communicate by email, the hours. Uh, benefits, we have, we have benefits for our employees. They, we get a 10% discount at Huntington Learning Center. We have a uh, company party every year. We have a portable laser tag system that we bring onto the property. We have uh, three acres we sit on here. And they can run the entire property. They're in the warehouse out. We lease some space to some storage sheds. They can hide in those. It's hysterical to watch these kids for three hours play laser tag endlessly and all the snow cones you can eat on there. And then do I hire them? Yes. Did I call them? Did I send them the paperwork? And have I gotten it all back? So this is kind of our summary sheet of the, the whole process. And then the training checklist, and again, available by email, to send it to you. And then the last, of course, was the website. Um, that company, when to work, again, it's the company. Um, I, am I promoting when to work? You know, do I get paid by them to do this? No. Uh, if, I, if you do sign up with them and you use Snowy Marketing, you tell them, Snowy, I get a free month if you sign up. That's And I don't do it for that. I think, you know, $25. Oh, boy. You know, it's, it's nice to have, but it's not why I do it. I do this because it's phenomenal. It's saving you time and effort as you are talking or dealing with employees and, and the various issues that go on there. So the, the whole promotion here of when to work is simply a well-designed, well-run program that has made it very easy for me to, to manage my employees. Okay. Um, Paul, I got it. There's one from Paul. I don't have the ability to write this. You need to email me, and I'll respond. So this is Paul. Is it? Hey, Go see. Sorry, I'm probably name uh, and okay he got it. yeah and and paul, paul i also wrote emailed you in behalf of paul as well just so you know okay um i'm i'm going to open this up sometimes this gets really noisy um hopefully we can pull this off but i would like any questions you guys have um i'm going to open up the mic now and please feel free to ask so everybody should be open at this point um, Jay, I happen to pull up the I will, email. I will. Okay. okay, once again, okay, everybody. Let me put the music going in the background. background. <laughs> Kill the music. Kill the music. Okay, hang on. Okay, Lyle, I have you unmuted. What was that? <laughs> uh, well, th there was a question here. This seems a bit overwhelming. I, I had somebody, I can, like I said, I was blowing through this. It really isn't. And they have got the most phenomenal, you, you hear a lot of these help screens. These guys have probably built the best help screen of any company I have ever dealt with. They've got every question, every solution, easy walkthrough. They're available by email to answer questions for you. They're knowledgeable. I, <laughs> I ought to be a salesman for them as much as I'm doing it. But it's just, they do a great job. And it, it seems overwhelming, and it's not. It's just that I threw everything at you at once. As you get in and play with it, as soon as you start setting up a couple of locations, you're like, wow, this is pretty easy. I've had a number of people that have, you know, took a few minutes to play with it and said, wow. And you can do a 30-day free trial. So you can grab it and play with it and not pay a penny for that first 30 days and then decide whether or not you like it. Okay. Sorry, Aaron, I was just no. through. Your final questions, seeing if I missed anything. I'm just going to uh, one more attempt for those for those of you who are listening and want to ask questions and you're not on a computer and stuff like that or anybody that wants to ask anything. I'm going to open the mic again, so please uh, just know that your end is now going to be heard. So I'll open up the mic and please yeah. feel free to ask. Mute the noise if possible. Yeah. I'm muted. Anyone have questions? Anyone have questions? Anybody have any questions? Any questions? Well, I think that we could probably set that up. I don't think that's for us. 
Okay, okay. That means I either overloaded everybody, like I said, this muted error. Muted error. Yeah. Okay, Lyle, you're up. Um, am I back on? Yeah. Okay. The I forgot what I was going to say. Well, there's a question for you. Does oh, the question can the software you? have cost attached to the shifts? Um, you can put wages in, but I I don't trust a system enough and the kids because what if they don't work those hours? If the kids work over, we use the cup count sheet to track the hours and then we keep it in um, a spreadsheet or a QuickBooks to do that. So I'm not sure exactly what Malcolm's question is. But, uh, so, um, what, what do I pay minimum wage? Uh, actually, that's a, a really good question. Minimum wage is different depending on where you are. My employees average uh, between three and four dollars an hour in tips. I actually pay six seventy-five an hour and report tips. As long as the tips are a minimum of a dollar ten, then I meet the minimum wage requirement. I can go down as low as I think it's four eighty-five an hour. I won't do that. Um, I want the kids to do it, but I, I start at 675 and get a quarter raise every year they come back. So I've got kids, I've got a gal that works for me, that's been with me. Uh, she, ma she manages as well, so she picks up an extra quarter for being a manager. But she's at $9 an hour and that. So I won't report tips because she's going over the, the 9 bucks. Um, about the, the 785. Yeah, and in my scenario, I've always done. I have a different approach to that. I'll always pay one dollar over minimum because to to get kids to be fired up to work in a in a little building all day. <laughs> so yeah, if, one's different. But I know the tips are there. These kids are pulling down on an average eleven dollars an hour. When you put seven bucks an hour and four bucks in tips, I mean, they have contests that go on between them. I I don't even know about them. But I have, I know the max in a six hour shift was $75 in tips. Holy. Um, the largest tip given was $50. Um, I had one gal, the lady found out she was going to become a chemist and she was a chemist and said, could be all the tip cups, by the way, don't say tip cup or tips appreciated. What they say is help pay for college. And every kid can tell you where he's going to college and what they're going into. And people love that. And they're like, Here's for college. Here's five bucks. I mean, it's all the time on there. That's cool. None of my kids are going Malcolm, to college. You just made me sick looking at those numbers. Huh? I hope I, if I ever have to pay that much, I'm going to start charging ten dollars for a snow cone. Whoa! Yeah, check that out. Yeah. Uh, oh, and this doesn't come through. So anybody who's watching it, they don't see it. So uh, Malcolm was saying in Australia. And their minimum wage is fifteen ninety six plus twenty percent loading for for casual status. That's brutal. <laughs> Give me a heart attack for that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, as always, thank you for joining us. Um, next, Aaron, did we decide on the topic for next week? Um, well, we were we were going. Do you want to go with the one you and I were kicking around yesterday? Uh, I do. With, yeah, I, but but okay. we can also our topic go. is franchise or independent. Which is the better way to go? Own a franchise, or actually, it should be or be an snowy franchise or snowy because what's the benefits of a franchise versus what's the benefits of snowy? And we're going to just do a little comparison of the two and let you look at the pros and cons both ways. And then yeah. you decide. Sometimes it's, it's just helpful to it. So a little more detail will be forthcoming, but that's a, a pretty basic overview of it. Yeah. Did, and again, and, uh, always, thank you. And, Aaron, and, go ahead. Well, I was just going to open it up. Just any suggestions that you people, that, that all those listening, watching, um, that, that you would like to see us discuss, uh, please submit that. We also have 
our, our forum. Again, I'm always encouraging everybody go to the forum, ask questions, participate there. Um, and, and there's also a section in the forum for you to be able to uh, submit ideas for our webinars each week. So if there's something that you do want to discuss and we haven't tackled that and or something that you would like more in depth on a specific area, please let us know. Um, thank you. Thanks again for coming. Uh, and let me add to that one more thing, Aaron. Give yeah. us some feedback. You know, are these useful to you or are we just killing an hour? Um, you know, what's been, you know, we want to make sure we're providing stuff that's beneficial and useful, not just filling time and I think my brothers just like to make me get on a computer because I hate doing that. So anyway, yeah, we, we would appreciate some feedback on the webinars. Are they hitting the things? Are we missing stuff? Are there things you'd like us to go back and cover again as well? So yeah, okay. well, you've got our information. And anything else we can do, again, feel free to uh, propose webinar. Which machines to use? That was webinar number one. Victoria, if you haven't seen that, and maybe we need to go back there and revisit that one. Um, you know, as we got going, we might have, we might want to reshoot that one and and tweak it a little bit. I haven't looked at that in a while since we first did that. Yeah, that was our first go at this, so maybe it is time to to take another go. Yeah, so, Corey, also, go go look at that one. If you feel it was inadequate, let us know, and we will revisit that. So thank you, excellent yeah. suggestion. And also. Um, I'm looking at some different platforms that will allow us to be able to do live demos. <clears throat> uh, like, so go out to the shaver, talk about them, talk about the benefits and stuff like that as well. Uh, yes, Tracy, you can watch past webinars. You can go to our blog page and access them. You can also go to our video page, and all of those will, will link you to YouTube as well. <clears throat> um, yeah, oh, it's but, on the website. Yeah, it's, they're all they're, over the place. And, and I wanted to put I'm my 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> I, I I wanted to comment on you know what everybody speaking to you saying Lyle are these useful? I, I I get stuff constantly for people who watch past ones that that have been saying hey man these are awesome and and that's what we're hoping and I just wanted to vo vocally put out these as well because again people watching the webinar they don't hear your comments. Um, so, so from Tracy, we get very useful just starting out. Great info. Um, Paul said, "I don't have hours to kill. This is very helpful." Um, um, seemed like there was another one as well, but uh, been in concession for business, been in concession business for years. This is top shelf info. Thanks so much. Anyway, this is awesome. Thank Thanks, guys. Um, okay. And, well, I'm gonna just one last time in case I didn't get it. Put my email out there. Just Lyle at snowy.com. Write that down. Email me for anything we have, some feedback, comments, suggestions, new ideas. We're always looking. Uh, we endlessly tinker. That's uh, just part of who we are. Yeah, so, and, uh, without any further ado, I think we're done and I'm off to another event. Um, oh, there is Aaron. Valerie's yeah. asking, I'm sorry, where do we go to see past webinars? I'll yeah. like to get an email that has the application to download. You, you know what, Lyle? Um, let me, um, I'm going to take the screen back. Yeah, go. And I just want to. So I just want to show you guys where these are so you're familiar when you're looking at it. You see my screen right now, right? You see the web page? Yeah, there's no Yeah, there you are. Okay. So you can go to media. You can go to video gallery. This will show the webinars. You can go directly to those. You can also go to blog entries and and see each of them. Each of these will take you. A lot of them are announcements, and then you'll see ones that have the, the name and then it has recording in it. That will actually be a link. So if I click on that, there's actually a YouTube link right there that you'd be able to watch them. Um, on our and I think they're listed down the right side. I think they list them as well. Okay, if I remember right. And again, the forum, um, we're still putting in content and stuff like that. But please participate in this forum. It, it's much much easier to answer questions that have been submitted and asked by you guys than to just create topics and answer my own topics. It's uh, it just seems more real and and better. Uh, so please help us build this back up and. 
Thank you. Thanks again for coming. And I believe, I think that's it. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thanks, everyone. We're done. We'll talk Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.